Meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen, I open the 63rd regular annual General Assembly of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft and uh, due to the Articles of Association, I assume the role of chairperson. I would like to welcome you shareholders, shareholder representatives here in the hall, the ladies and gentlemen of the media and all other listeners and viewers who are watching the begin of our AGM over the internet, also on behalf of my colleagues on the supervisory board and the board of management. I would like to point out that there is extra space at level A of this building for the case that this hall is not sufficient in order to hold all the shareholders. Signs and our guards would like to point out level A to to you, where we also have the catering facilities. On large screens, you will be able to watch the meeting. However, you cannot participate in the debate and not in the vote on the agenda items. To this purpose, you would please have to come back to this assembly hall in level at level B. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look back at uh, fiscal year 2022. The year 2022 held a lot of uh, quite big challenges for us that we needed to deal with, in particular the dramatic and far-reaching consequences of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Despite the challenging environment, Volkswagen Group has continued its transformation towards electric and digital mobility and strengthened its financial stamina. We would like to show our particular appreciation to the Board of Management, to the Works Council, management, all employees of the Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft and all of the people working for the affiliated companies for the work that they did in 2022. You all have shown great personal commitment and a high level of motivation. Thus, you were instrumental in Volkswagen Group having a successful fiscal year 2022. Later on, we will talk in great detail about the strategic challenges we're faced with and the cooperation of the committees in working through these challenges. But please first allow me to work through the necessary formal matters for today's AGM. The annual general meeting was convocated in line with the stipulations of the Articles of Association. Uh, convocation of the AGM was published on the 27th of March 2023 in the Federal Gazette. The minutes written by the notary public according to Stock Corporation Act uh, will be kept as in former AGMs by notary Rucky, who you see on the stage in the middle, additionally as notary public for the Assembly Hall. We have Dr. Krause here, who will be at the Speaker's Registration Desk on the left-hand side. He is a support to notary Rucky, and he will be available for potential redirection regarding the minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, as soon as the attendance numbers are established, I'll announce them to the AGM. Moreover, the list of participants will be updated continuously. At the terminals that you will find at the entrances to the assembly hall on level B, there you can inspect the electronic list of attendance and list of participants. Should you wish to leave the AGM prematurely or temporarily, I would like to ask you to take note of the information regarding deregistration and re-registration. This information for shareholders, which of course is also information for representatives of shareholders, are available to you in the form of an information sheet that you received at the registration disk. For reasons of security, I would like to ask all the participants to the EDGE GM that even if they only temporarily leave the meeting, that they please take with them all their belongings, including 
loading their bags. Ladies and gentlemen, your custodian bank or the registration office uh, gave you the entry tickets that you swap for voting card blocks upon registration in case you are an ordinary shareholder or you swap them against a participant's card in case you are a preferred shareholder. Now, as um, um, ordinary shareholders, should you have not swapped your, all of your entry tickets for voting cards, please do that in your own interest. Otherwise, your ordinary shares cannot participate in the vote. Entitled to vote in this assembly are only holders of ordinary shares and their representatives. I would like to ask you to uh, switch your mobile phones on silent and not to make phone calls in the hall so that we can hold our meeting without interferences. From the beginning of the debate, it is neither permitted to take photos nor to film. The area of attendance consists of level levels A and B, so that's the entire space readily available for shareholder here in the City Cube from the registration desks onwards. In the entire area of attendance, please behave in such a way that those shareholders who want to listen to the proceedings are not obstructed in doing so. As you were able to see from the information at the entrance, there is CCTV in operation in the building. This measure is necessary for reasons of security. There will, however, be no recording without cause. So much as regards the necessary formal matters to attend to. Ladies and gentlemen, since our last AGM, deserving employees of the Volkswagen Group passed away. Professor Dr. Karl Hahn, former chairman of the board of Volkswagen and member of the supervisory board of Volkswagen AG, died on the 14th of January 2023 at the age of 96. Professor Hahn was in the Volkswagen Group from 1954 till 1972 and from 1982 till 1997 and during that time was decisive for the development of the enterprise. With his untiring commitment, he set the stage for the success of the Volkswagen Group in a decisive way. The company and its employees bow their heads with a lot of gratitude and respect to his merits. We will keep him and his life's work in the best of memories. May I ask you now to please rise to commemorate the deceased employees of the Volkswagen Group. Thank you for showing your respect to the deceased. Ladies and gentlemen, I can state that all members of the Board of Management are present. As regards the Supervisory Board, Premier Weil begs to be excused because of other commitments that cannot be postponed. He cannot attend today. The other members of the Supervisory Board of Volkswagen AG are here. At this point, on behalf of the entire supervisory board and the board of management, I would like to congratulate Dr. Wolfgang Porsche, who celebrates his 80th birthday today. Congratulations. Dr. Porsche, we wish you all the best for for next year, and most of all, good health. Now, I would like to uh, give you a summary version of the Supervisory Board report and point out the changes in the Supervisory Board since the last AGM and the implementation of the recommendations of the German Corporate Governance Code. Subsequently, um, the Board of Management will report to you. And afterwards, we will have the debate after the 
the end of the debate, we will carry out the vote. Ladies and gentlemen, let me first turn to the supervisory board reports. Report. There have been two changes in the composition of the supervisory board of Volkswagen AG since the close of last year's extraordinary general meeting. Effective 3rd of March 2023, Mr. Jens Rote resigned from his position as an employee representative on the supervisory board of Volkswagen AG. Braunschweig Registry Court appointed Mr. Gerardo Scapino to the supervisory board of Volkswagen AG as his successor with effect from 21st of April 2023 in accordance with Section 104 German Stock Corporation Act. Mr. Scarpino is Executive Director of the Volkswagen Group Works Council. On behalf of the entire supervisory board, I would like to take this opportunity to once again thank the departing supervisory board member, Mr. Rota, for all of his work and the good cooperation. Um, Dr. Günther Horwart was court appointed as a member of the supervisory board of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft to succeed the late Dr. Louise Kiesling, effective 28th of February 2023. In accordance with a motion, Dr. Horvath's term of office was limited to the close of today's annual general meeting. Moreover, the terms of office of the supervisory board members, Ms. Mariana Hayes and Dr. Wolfgang Porsche, will expire at the close of today's annual general meeting. As you will have seen from the agenda, the supervisory board proposes to the annual general meeting that the aforementioned persons namely Ms. Marianne Heiss, Dr. Günther Horvath and Dr. Wolfgang Porsche each be elected to the supervisory board for a full term of office with effect as of the close of today's annual general meeting. I will now hand over the floor to Dr. Horvath who will introduce himself to you. Dr. Horvath, over to you. Shareholders, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I was proposed and suggested to become a member of the Volkswagen AG Supervisory Board. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Günther Horvath. I was born in Salzburg. I'm 70 years of age. I'm a lawyer. And since my first days, I worked in economy consultancy. My focus areas are company law and international arbitration law. Till February 2018, I was partner of the worldwide active lawyer, um, lawyers, Freshfield Brookhouse Daringer. Since then, I'm a managing director of Dr. Günther Jörg Horvath Lawyers Consultancy headquartered in Vienna. I studied law at Graz University. After becoming a doctor, I did a master course at New York University in comparative legal studies. Subsequently, I went to international law firm Heller Löber Bahn and Partner in Vienna, where I've been active since 1982 as a partner. After the merger of that law firm with leading German and English law firms to become Freshwood Brookhouse Deringer, from, from the year 2000 onwards, I was a partner of the new law firm. In the framework of my activity as a partner, right from the beginning, I assumed a number of management roles. Among others, for some years, I was a member of the Partnership Council, the worldwide leading body of that law firm. In parallel, for five years, I was a member of the board and chairman of the Lex Mumbi Joint Stock Corporation, headquartered in Houston, Texas. At this point of time, one of the largest uh, information company of law firms. My focus in company law 
are um, at consultancy of boards of management, supervisory boards, joint ventures, mergers and acquisitions and company structures. My clients world, were worldwide active large companies, among them American companies and DAX, quote, DAX, DAX listed companies and a number of very important family owned companies. Through my long years of experience as lawyer, I have knowledge and experience in various areas that are important for the supervisory board mandate of Volkswagen AG experience in the automotive industry, deep know-how in corporate governance, legal and compliance and HR. Since 2018, I'm a member of the supervisory board of Porsche Automobile Holding SE. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to work towards the benefit of the company, of your company and the Volkswagen AG. I'm very very pleased to be given this opportunity. Thank you very much for your attention and for your trust. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Horvath. After extensive discussion, the Supervisory Board has also decided to nominate Dr. Wolfgang Porsche for re-election to the Supervisory Board, even though at the time of the election he has exceeded the regular age limit of at the 75 years laid down in the Rules of Procedure for the Supervisory Board. Dr. Wolfgang Porsche is indirectly one of the largest individual shareholders of Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft and and also based on his many years of work for a large number of other companies of the Volkswagen Group, he has special knowledge and experience in the business areas of the company, which the supervisory board is convinced he will continue to contribute for the benefit and in the interest of the company in the future as well. The CVs of Ms. Hayes, Dr. Hobart and Dr. Porsche, as well as further information regarding the nominations can be found in the annex to the agenda. All three have already stated that in the case they would be elected today, they would accept the office. This concludes my remarks regarding the uh, supervisory board uh, composition. There have been no changes in the composition of the Board of Management since the close of last year's extraordinary general meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, in the um, in fiscal 2022, the work of the supervisory board of Volkswagen AG and its committees focused on the Volkswagen Group's strategic direction. This included the IPO of Porsche AG and the sale of 25% plus one ordinary share of Porsche AG to Porsche Automobile Holding SE. The supervisory board regularly deliberated on the company's position and development in the reporting period. We supervised and supported the board of management in its running of the business and advised it on issues relating to the management of the company and particularly on sustainability issues in accordance with our duties under the law, the Articles of Association and the Rules of Procedure. The Supervisory Board was directly involved in all questions that are of importance to the group. Additionally, we discussed strategic considerations with the Board of Management at regular intervals. Ladies and gentlemen, the Board of Management complied with its duties to provide information which are set out in the information rules adopted by the Supervisory Board in 2018. The Board of Management provided us with information regularly, promptly and comprehensively, both in writing and orally, particularly on all matters of relevance to the company relating to its strategy, the business development and the company's planning and position. This also included the risk situation and risk management. In this respect, the Board of Management also informed the Supervisory Board of further improvements to the internal control system and the risk and compliance management system. In addition, the Supervisory Board received information about compliance and other topical issues from the Board of Management on an ongoing basis. We received the documents relevant to our decisions in good time for our meetings at regular intervals. We 
also received a detailed report from the Board of Management on the current business position and the forecast for the current year. Any deviations in performance from the plans and targets previously drawn up were explained in detail by the Board of Management either in person or in writing. Together with the Board of Management, we analyzed the reasons for the deviations and determined corresponding countermeasures. In particular, um, the Board of Management reported in detail and in a timely manner on the impacts related to the Russia-Ukraine conflict and explained the measures that had been taken. Um, I regularly met with the Chairman of the Board of Management to discuss important current issues. These included, among others, the group's strategy and planning, its business development and the risk situation and risk management, including uh, integrity and compliance issues in the Volkswagen Group. Um, however, the supervisory board did not only communicate very closely with the board of management, but also participated in the dialogue with our stakeholders. Within reason, I discussed supervisory board specific topics with investors and in consultation with the board of management also discussed non-supervisory specific topics. Governance issues were one focus point of the discussions. I informed the supervisory board of meetings with investors after they had taken place. The supervisory board held a total of 16 meetings in uh, fiscal 2022. Eight of the meetings were held face to face and eight of the meetings were held as video uh, meetings or conference calls. In four meetings, the supervisory board solely discussed the IPO of Porsche AG and the sale of 25% plus one ordinary share of Porsche AG to Porsche Automobile Holding SE. The supervisory board members who had indicated that they belonged to the Porsche or Pich family or that uh, had a position in Porsche Automobile Holding SE or Porsche AG and participated in the transaction. Against this background, the rate of attendance was 85%. Supervisory board members who did not attend a meeting for for reasons other than a possible conflict of interest, were able to engage with the meeting topics using the preparatory documents and could generally participate in the resolutions by means of written votes. On page 14 of the annual report, you can find an overview of the attendance of the individual supervisory board members. Particularly urgent matters were decided in writing or by using electronic means of communication. The executive committee of the supervisory board met 38 times in the reporting period whereby in 22 meetings it solely discussed the IPO of Porsche AG and the sale of 25% plus one ordinary share of Porsche AG to Porsche Automobile Holding SE. The audit committee held four meetings. No meetings of the nomination committee took place in 2022. The Mediation Committee likewise did not need to convene. The number of meetings of the Supervisory Board and its committees was uh, unusually high in, 20, in fiscal 2022, primarily due to the IPO of Porsche AG and the Russia-Ukraine conflict. This shows that in uh, fiscal 2022, the Supervisory Board closely monitored and advised the Board of Management in addition to carrying out its other task. A detailed description of the topics discussed in the meetings of the Supervisory Board and its committees can be found in the Supervisory Board report on pages 11 to 14 of the annual report. Ladies and gentlemen, on 11th of November 2022, the Board of Management and Supervisory Board issued the annual declaration pursuant to Section 161 German Stock Corporation Act on the recommendations of the German Corporate Governance Code. 
an explanation of all the deviations from the recommendations can be found in the Declaration of Conformity. The Declaration of Conformity is available on our Investor Relations website under the heading Corporate Governance. Further information regarding the implementation of the recommendations and suggestions made in the German Corporate Governance Code can be found in the section headed Corporate Governance, beginning on page 43 of the annual report and in the Annex to the Consolidated Financial Statements on page 463 of the annual report. In 2020, the Audit Committee agreed on a suitable procedure with the Board of Management for ongoing monitoring of Volkswagen Group related party transactions. As part of this procedure, the Board of Management ensures that related party transactions are generally at arm's length by using the so-called best price principle. The Audit Committee continuously monitors the actions of the Board of Management. To this end, the Audit Committee commissioned um, Ernest and Young GmbH Wirtschaftsprüfungsgesellschaft most recently in November 2022 to conduct spot checks to establish whether transactions with relevant related parties were conducted at arm's length and in accordance with proper business practice. On 5th of September 2022, 2022, based on the rules on related party transactions, the supervisory board approved the conclusion of the share purchase agreement between Volkswagen Aktiengesellschaft and Porsche Automobile Holding SE for the sale of 25% plus one ordinary share of Porsche AG to Porsche Automobile Holding SE. No other approval decisions on the part of the supervisory board regarding related party transactions were required in the reporting period. The report on relationships with affiliated companies submitted by the Board of Management was audited by the auditors, Ernest and Young. The supervisory board also examined this report and declared that upon completion of its examination, there were no objections to be raised to the concluding declaration by the Board of Management in the dependent company report. The supervisory board also engaged Anderson Young for an external audit of the content of the combined separate non-financial report for 2022. The aim of this report is in particular to increase transparency in respect of ecological and social aspects of companies in the EU. Upon completion of its own independent examination of the combined separate non-financial report for 2022, which took into account Ernest and Young's findings, the supervisory board did not have any objections. We also resolved, um, together with the Board of Management, that we would prepare the remuneration report for the 2022 financial year. In addition to the completeness check required by law, Ernest and Young also reviewed the content of the remuneration report and issued an unqualified auditor's opinion. This concludes my oral report. I would like to refer you to the written report of the Supervisory Board, which you can find in the annual report starting on page 12. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to talk about the proposed adjustment of the remuneration systems for the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board. The remuneration system for the Board of Management is regularly reviewed with the involvement of a renowned and independent remuneration consultant. The review concerns in particular as to whether the total remuneration is appropriate and customary in comparison with a peer group specifically aligned with Volkswagen AG. It was evident that the management board remuneration had increased in the peer market. The remuneration level for the members of the board of management at Volkswagen has, taking into account the base remuneration as well as the target remuneration for the annual bonus and the long-term bonus, essentially remained the same for the last six years. 
Peer group companies have already increased management board remuneration in recent years. Volkswagen is therefore no longer positioned within the peer group as envisaged in terms of management board remuneration. We thus wish to continue to increase management board remuneration to where we see ourselves in the upper mid-range of the peer group. For this purpose, it is necessary to increase the target and the maximum remuneration accordingly. At the same time, however, it will be more challenging than it used to be for the members of the board of management to achieve this new target and maximum remuneration. In the context of variable remuneration, the supervisory board has already decided to make the targets for the relevant KPIs such as operating profit, return and uh, profit per share even more ambitious than they have been. In addition, the importance attached to the long-term variable remuneration will be increased within the scope of the adjusted remuneration system. In future, nearly half of the target total remuneration will depend on the long-term and sustainable success of the group and on its capital market performance. In this way, an even greater focus will be placed on long-term successful development. Moreover, the successful transformation of the Volkswagen Group will be advanced with even more force and competitiveness will be secured. The possibility to grant a special bonus has not yet been used and, in addition, will be deleted in the adjusted remuneration system. The remuneration of the supervisory board members of Volkswagen has remained unchanged for around six years too. The amount of remuneration received by members of supervisory board in the DAX has increased dynamically in this period. Therefore, the supervisory board and board of management propose adjusting the supervisory board remuneration so that it is in line with market conditions again. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention thus far. I would now like to ask Dr. Blume and and afterwards, Dr. Antlitz, to give the report of the Board of Management. Dr. Antlitz will give explanations on the items on the agenda 6 through to 8 and 10. I would now like to hand the floor, first of all, to Dr. Blume. Dr. Blume, you have the floor. Many thanks, Mr. Pötsch. Good morning, dear shareholders, dear colleagues. A very warm welcome to our annual general meeting here in Berlin, shaping mobility for the present and for the future. That is our mission, our motivation, our passion. The Volkswagen Group is facing big challenges. Indeed, our in entire industry is facing big challenges. We have a 10-point plan for our operational and strategic areas of action with concrete milestones, a plan that is suitable and measurable, and we are making good progress with implementing it. Today, we are looking back on the past year and overall, we can be very satisfied. In a difficult environment, we achieved very solid financial results. We forged ahead with a transformation towards e-mobility and digitization. And we have charted the course for the Volkswagen Group. We've done so swiftly, with ambition and determination. And that it was a very strong performance by a strong team. Dear colleagues of the entire Volkswagen Group, thank you so much.
On this basis, we look forward into the future with confidence. We have laid a very stable foundation on which to build. But however, there are undoubtedly also areas where we have to become better. The only way we can constantly improve is by never ceasing to challenge ourselves. What is important is that we can continue with our strong and focused investment in the future. We are accelerating the pace of our e-mobility ramp-up. We are focusing on our own re-engineered software platform. And we are expanding our know-how in battery technology. The Volkswagen Group brands are entering a new era of electric and digital mobility. Our ambition is to be even more sustainable in this new age and even more successful. The figures for 2022 show that the Volkswagen Group is very well placed and we can operate from a very strong financial position. Once again, we face a challenging environment, a flagging economy, rising interest rate, supply chain disruptions. The semiconductor shortage continues to be a challenge. As a result, our unit sales were down on the previous year. At the same time, the trend towards higher valued, better equipped vehicles continued. Our sales revenues therefore grew to 279 billion, a significant rise of around 12 percent compared with the previous year. We were able to increase our operating profit before special items by around 13 percent to 22.5 billion euros, and our operating margin also grew grew, moving up to 8.1%. With our 10 strong, iconic brands, we cater to all mobility needs. We operate independently with our own positioning and strategic orientation for the success of the group as a whole. And last year's results proved that their attractive models are a compelling argument for customers. Volkswagen, Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, Skoda, Seat and Cooper have been brought together to form the volume brand group. This brand group saw rise in sales revenue, operating results and return on sales. And we are convinced that the volume brand group has the potential to make an even stronger contribution to the success of the entire group. We are currently working on the programs to bring this about. We will improve the brand positioning even further by giving the brands an even sharper profile. In addition to comprehensive profitability programs, we intend to leverage synergies even more strongly, for example, in development, production and in after sales. At the same time, we want to present our brands appropriately. We want to combine tradition with the future. This is the car with the newest innovations, ready for the new world, but it's not yet a Volkswagen. This is how the car can be turned into a Volkswagen, because it's only a Volkswagen if it's full of sand. Und Eis auf den neuen Sitzen. And if you find ice cream on the new seats, and if it has a name like Matilda, Lily, or Kalle, it's only a Volkswagen if you have emotions for it. If you can bring people together with the help of this vehicle. Wenn er dich zum stressigsten und schönsten Tag in deinem Leben bringt. If it takes you to the most stressful and the most beautiful day of your life, if you realize how quickly you, your kids grow up und deine alt. and your parents get older and older, Volkswagen, it's only a Volkswagen if it's accessible for all und wenn er dir ein ins and if it puts a smile on your face. Es ist erst ein Volkswagen, wenn er dazu it's only a Volkswagen if it contributes to making this world a better place for the children and your children's children. Yes, we build cars. But no matter how progressive the technology is, it's all about human beings who turn a car into a Volkswagen. 
Our premium grant group also grew significantly in terms of sales revenues and above all as regards operating results before special items. Audi, Bentley, Lamborghini and Ducati have a profitable and resilient business model. They have impressively proved that with strong margins, then there is the sports and luxury brand group with Porsche. Here too, we reported higher sales revenues, a higher operating result and a strong operating return on sales. Added to that is a top performance by Porsche share since the IPO in the fall. Not forgetting Porsche AG's fast entry into the DAX. We also posted strong results with financial services. Trophy drivers there where the high demand for used vehicles and positive effects from derivatives. In the commercial vehicles business, Traton purses its best results for unit sales and sales revenues and saw a sharp rise in the operating results, which was increased by a factor of four. Once again, we are pleased to be sharing the overall success of the Volkswagen with you, our shareholders. We are therefore today proposing a dividend of eight euros and seventy cents per ordinary share and eight euros and seventy six cents per preferred share. This equals a payout ratio of twenty nine. 9.4% and represents a year-on-year -year increase of 15.9% and 1.20 euros per share. So therefore, we would exceed the ratio of last year's by far. In all, in early January, we also distributed the special dividend from the successful IPO of Porsche AG, 19 euros and six cents per ordinary and preferred share. The Volkswagen Group made a solid start to fiscal 2023. In the first quarter, operating profit rose sharply, excluding the negative effects from the valuation of commodity hedges and it rose more sharply than sales revenues. Sales revenues grew around 22 percent to 76 billion euros. The main drivers were the research in sales volumes in Europe and North America. An improved price positioning also had a very positive effect. Operating briefs before the aforementioned effects rose significantly by 35% to 7.1 billion euros. As a result, the operating return on sales before valuation effects came in at around 9%. With this solid financial performance and an order backlog of 1.8 million vehicles at the end of the first quarter in Western Europe alone, make us look very positively into the fiscal year and confirms our outlook. For the 2023 fiscal year, we expect deliveries to customers of the Volkswagen Group to reach about 9.5 million vehicles. We also anticipate that the group's sales revenue will be 10 to 15 percent above the levels of the previous year, and that the operating return on sales will remain at a very solid figure of 7.5 to 8.5 percent. Ladies and gentlemen, Volkswagen is a fantastic group. For me, it is really a great honor to lead this group. I am guided by some fundamental principles. I am fully focused on our customers, our brands and on our products. People are at the heart of everything I do. In few months, we have already got things moving. We have taken many important decisions that were also complex and far-reaching. And we have progressed faster than I had hoped. This is testimony to our team, to the shared desire to set the Volkswagen Group up for a successful future in terms of operations, organizational structures, technology and culture. The first few months since I took office shown very clearly that my dual role as the CEO of the Volkswagen Group and the chairman of Porsche AG work well and is paying off.
At Porsche, I'm closely involved in the processes, in the technologies, with the people. Based on this, I can make sound strategic decisions in the group, and that benefits all our brands. The autonomous management of Porsche AG following the IPO means that conflicts of interest are avoided from the very outset. At group level, overarching key functions are based on the same logic. We also match these key tasks with dual roles at group and brand level. As a result of that, we have established a new powerful team to speed up execution in production and procurement, sales and quality, development and design, as well as in communications. This is working extremely well and is having a visible effect. Teamed up with all the brand, this is how we can create greater strength. The leadership model is not only efficient, but it is also particularly effective. What is our approach? We analyze, we set priorities, we decide and execute. Our actions are sustainable and measurable, and we do this as a team. We are extending Volkswagen's global positioning even further. We are strong in Europe and in China, and we have a very ambitious plan in North America. Other growth regions such as India and Southeast Asia are regions that we keep a very close eye on. We want, and indeed we must, become stronger when it comes to software and digitization. We are building up businesses in new technological areas, for example, along the entire value stream of the battery. And we are comprehensively safeguarding our raw material chains with our global partners. This helps us reinforce our robustness on a long-term basis and we're becoming more sustainable. We have a very clear focus on e-mobility and renewable energies. That reduces our emissions on a massive scale and permanently. The 10-point plan that we drew up last year sets our course and functions as a guideline. The program bundles the issues that are decided for the future of the Volkswagen Group in terms of operations and strategy. When I took office, I said, these are the topics that we have to focus on, and we want to reach our targets before the end of the year. And now I can already tell you that we have already accomplished a lot of these goals, and we continue to work along these lines effectively and efficiently. I'd like to take this opportunity to briefly outline the individual points in our plan once again. Our strategic investment planning systematically lays the foundation for the future. We have developed a strategy that focuses our capital investment on the most attractive profit pools worldwide, in other words, on high return segments. Up until 2027, we plan to invest a total of 180 billion euros. Over two-thirds of that sum will be invested into digitization and electrification. We are also focusing on our world regions to put us even in a more, more robust position. Our strategy is bearing fruit. Across the group, we delivered around 26% more all-electric vehicles last year than we did in 2021. The share of EVs in total leverage rose to around 7%. This is a new record for us and a milestone on which we want to continue to build. Our target for the current year is a share of around 10%. And our goal for 2025 is for every fifth group vehicle delivered globally to be all electric. A little earlier, I said that one principle is a full focus on our customers, our brands, and our products. That is because people buy brands, and our brands have a cult. They are tradition and charisma. They are icons that shape these brands. Just think of the Golf, the Bully, and the Porsche 911. Millions of people associate something with these vehicles. Memories, experience, emotions, all over the world, that is the case from generation to generation. Our brands are part of the automobile history. 
that is great strength in that. And we want to plan that, to, to use that strength. The success of the ID bus shows very clearly that the combination of tradition and state-of-the-art technology is something that our customers welcome very much. Our icons must and will be part of the e-mobility of the future. We must, we will, and we can position these models where they belong in terms of brand image. We are concentrating on product strategy, design, quality, and a future-proof technology profile for our ranging products, from, for our products ranging from small cars to heavy trucks. We are concentrating on product strategy, design, quality and future-proof models. This year, all electric models will follow the new VW ID3, the second generation of our all electric bestseller with a comprehensive upgrade, the ID7, that had its world's first in Shanghai in April, our efficiency champion with a high level of comfort long ranges and long ranges of over 700 kilometers and an operating concept especially designed for China that features an avatar for easy communication with the vehicle or the ID bus with a long wheelbase. The model has already become an icon. I personally am a fan of this particular vehicle and the Q8 e-tron, the pot top model in Audi's electric SUV portfolio and the Cupra Tavascan, an emotional vehicle which stands for pure efficiency. Porsche will begin developing the all-electric Macan to customers in 2024 on the basis of the new premium platform electric. In the middle of the decades, the seven 18 will go all electric, followed by the all electric Cayenne. Porsche also plans to add a new all electric luxury SUV to its product portfolio, a sporty model to sit above the Cayenne. Skoda is also accelerating and expanding its electric strategy. An additional three all-electric models will be entering the market in 2026, and in addition to that, we plan to launch 10 new Volkswagen electric models up to 2026, including an entry-level model with a price tag of 25,000 euros. In China, we are the market leader and operate from a position of strength. Last year, we more than doubled deliveries of all-electric vehicles from the ID family in the country. We need the right strategy and the right pace to consolidate this position for the future. Because the speed is very impressive for electrification and digitization in China. Our response is our 2030 target vision for China. Together with our China team and the Group Board of Management, who we recently agreed on that during the Shanghai Auto Show. In essence, we are looking to tailor our products even closer to the Chinese customers and accelerate the development of new technologies and leverage new synergies. Our approach is in China for China. That is why we focus on local partnerships, such as Horizon Robotics. In 2022, we entered into such a new partnership. Together, we are forging ahead with the development of driver assistance systems and highly automated vehicles in China. And we are also building our own development capabilities in the near future. Thus, we want to step up the pace of research and development, and we want to develop a new technology concept for China. We expect to be able to reduce development times for a new model by around one third. In addition, we have founded Carrier China, and we are expecting these operations on a targeted basis. Furthermore, we start production at our Volkswagen Anhui electric joint venture this year. At the same time, in the first four months, we have grown much more strongly than the entire Chinese market, and this is why we have gained much more speed. At the same time, we are making great important progress in making further headway in the North American market with the Volkswagen Group that puts us into the right place at the right time. In North America, customers are ready to go electric. An industrial policy in North America with excellent framework conditions is a positive conducive factor for investors. With our plant in Chattanooga and Tennessee last year, we commissioned a new electric assembly line last year. 
and now we are building the very successful VWID4 there. We have launched the so-called boost plan under Electrify America, and with that we want to increase the number of our fast charging stations from 3,500 to 8,000 by the end of 2025. Moreover, we decided to build a battery, battery cell factory in Canary. Thus, we are safeguarding and strengthening our value stream in North America, and we are entering into new partnerships for raw materials and sustainable energy. With the electrification of the revived iconic U.S. Scout brand, we have seized the opportunity to enter the highly attractive pickup and rugged SUV segment. This segment accounts for over one-third of the U.S. American market. So we're taking an important step towards increasing our presence and our profitability in the North American market. We will produce the Scout models in South Carolina. If America was going to take another shot, what would it look like? It would be a shot to contribute something enduring. It would no doubt take our 250 years of hands-on, hard-won experience and apply it fresh to something meaningful. It seems obvious that it would involve steel as well as the work of human hands. It's clear America's next shot would come from a factory. But this time, things would be different. The workers in that factory would have skin in the game, stakeholders. And the operation itself would respect both people and planet. This operation would produce something strong and smart, chock full of American ingenuity. But this shot would be a miss, unless it resulted in something every single American could appreciate. And more than that, use. This something would be helpful. And it better damn well be fun. So it would be at home equally on a Tuesday morning or a Sunday afternoon. If America was going to take another shot well, you know, it sure might look like a truck. One hell of a truck. One that is absolutely beloved, but hasn't been around in 40 years. One from a brand that helped feed, build, and defend America. One that would excite our possibilities again. One that would make certain that the values of yesterday would lead the charge into tomorrow. Starting today, America is taking that shot with that truck. It's called the Scout. To right wrongs, to carry forward our past, invigorate communities, lead with respect, and help realize the promise of a nation. It is America's next shot. And we do not intend to miss. One key element in the 10-point plan is the realignment of Carriot, and we've already made good progress in this regard. In recent months, we have taken decisions and analyzed the situation, and we have come up with the right strategies and personal developments. Now we set the new milestones for the further development we want to make advances in the field of strategy, structures, and personal development. Carriot focuses on the development of digital future technologies for the group brands. We are stepping up the pace, and we are broadening our approach to partnerships. This is designed to combine our competences with the best solutions on the market for the benefit of our customers. The software vehicles will be much more closely woven into the development of the vehicles. When I took office in September 2022, I underscored that Carriot is a key success factor for the Volkswagen Group. And it will continue to be that way. The goal is clear. Carriot should and will deliver. We have restructured our future platform, the SSP, the Scalable Systems Platform. 
It was restructured in terms of technology, organization, and with regards to possible synergies. It was key to organize the lead roles for Volkswagen, Audi, and Porsche and to develop the new product strategy. This will give us a high-performance, scalable system that we will be rolling out at all the brands by the end of the decade. Based on our decisions about platforms and products, we will also allocate specific models to specific production sites. That enables us to leverage further synergies. With the current MEB and PPE platforms, we have defined extensive technological updates. The MEB is our successful modular electric drive toolkit. Last year alone, half a million electric vehicles were built on this platform. That makes it one of the leading e-mobility platforms the world over. We call the further development of this platform MEB+, and this will enable us to make significant steps forward in automated driving in range and in towing times. In our main plant in Wolfsburg, the MEB+, will be used for the first time in 2026 in the strong high-volume, booming, compact SUV segment. We have made major progress in establishing our own battery production capabilities and expanding the charging infrastructure. PowerCo bundles all our activities throughout the entire battery value stream, from raw material supply and development through to the construction and operation of gigafactories. We have already laid the foundation for our battery cell factory in Salzgitter. Further decisions on-site locations have already been taken, Valencia in Spain and, as I've already mentioned, St. Thomas in Canada. However, if ramping up e-mobility is to succeed, we also need swift expansion of our charging infrastructure. This is why we are active worldwide in this regard. Together with our partners, we will be setting up around 45,000 fast charging stations with our partners in Europe, China and the U.S. by 2025. We are organizing and prioritizing our mobility maps. We have discontinued some activities. We are developing others further with a strong focus. One example is the Europe transaction that we've concluded together with partners last year. The Europe Car Mobility Group will be the cornerstone of Volkswagen's future mobility platform, and it caters to a wide variety of customers' mobility needs. From car sharing for a few minutes to car rental for several days and car subscriptions for multiple months. We are also tackling the issue of climate change with commitment and determination because at Volkswagen we look at sustainability based on a holistic approach, economical, economic and social. And we are doing that along the entire value chain from development to our suppliers network and production through to energy sources for electric vehicles. Last year, we defined even more ambitious CO2 targets in the field of production. Our ambition is to reduce CO2 emissions from the production of our passenger cars and light commercial vehicles by 50% by 2030. By the end of this year, 100% of the energy used at our European production sites will already come from renewable sources. We firmly believe that we can achieve a sustainable increase in the value of our company. The 10-point system with the prioritized areas of action has already proven its worth in the group. That is why we have now customized the system specifically to suit our brands and organizational structures. This means that we've set transparent, binding and measurable targets. What is more is that it gives us the right focus and the need for speed, as well as providing the teams with a clear orientation. It's about the unique positioning of our brands. What are our strengths and how can we showcase them even more efficiently and effectively? What are our weaknesses 
and how can they be done away with? We have to find ambitious binding financial targets for all the brands, for the return on sales, net cash flow, break even and fixed costs, and we have identified the necessary measures. Each brand runs a program to improve operational and strategic performance in the short, medium and long term. We are thus consistently leveraging synergies and scaling effects with our platforms and value drivers throughout the entire group across all the different brands. Based on all these factors, we are developing a clear, a unique, a specific profile for each of our brands. On the Capital Markets Day in June, we will be presenting an overview of where the Volkswagen Group stands today, what we offer the market and where we want to be in three years from now. The presentation will focus on the new team, the new spirit of entrepreneurship, our strong technology platforms and the benefits that bring our brand groups, our regional strategies and our future financial targets. Ladies and gentlemen, I have clearly defined our ambition. We want to shape the mobility of the present and the future with strong brands, with innovative technologies, inspiring products and with a strong team. And we are making very good progress. If we are comparing our company to a house, you would say that we have worked on renovating, reorganizing and upgrading. We have taken very important decisions and presented a clear plan for the Volkswagen Group and its brands and for all the people behind our company. It's quite impressive to see how our team tackles all the difficult tasks with the team spirit, speed and passion. The overall conditions continue to be challenging. Crises have unfortunately become the new normal. This puts a burden on our company, on society by and large, and what's most important, on the people. It is always important to me to focus on opportunities. We have a clear plan for transforming and realigning our company. We want to position our brands even more effectively, make better use of synergies, and work hard on costs and efficiency. We will scale our electric platforms and develop a relevant automotive software stack. And we will continue to invest in future-proof mobility services. And we take on responsibility for sustainable action. All of this is based on solid finances and based on our values. We have already come a long way in recent months, but we also know that we have more to offer as a Volkswagen Group. We see the potential and we have resolved to leverage in it. And I'm delighted to know that you will be by our side as we move forward. And now let me pass the floor to my colleague Arno Antlitz. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you, Oliver. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to welcome you to our annual general meeting. It is legally provided for me outlining today the legal and commercial backgrounds of agenda items 6, 7, 8 and 10 of today's AGM for you in more detail. As you could read in the invitation, this refers to the approval of the annual general meeting for a profit and loss transfer agreement, a hive down, the introduction of a temporary authorization to hold virtual shareholders meetings and the renewal of our authorized capital. For more detailed information about these agenda items, you can also consult the invitation to the annual general meeting and our website. So first, I would like to outline agenda item six, which refers to the approval for an amendment of the profit and loss transfer agreement between Volkswagen AG and its wholly owned subsidiary Volkswagen Bank GmbH. 
The profit and loss transfer agreement in question was entered into in 2002 between Volkswagen Financial Services AG and Volkswagen Bank and was amended most recently in 2014. In 2017, it was transferred by way of a spin-off from Volkswagen Financial Services to Volkswagen AG. The capital adequacy of Volkswagen Bank is monitored on an ongoing basis by European banking supervision. The existing profit and loss transfer agreement uh, being amended in certain respect has now uh, become necessary in order to ensure that in the light of the changed banking supervision requirements, the share capital of Volkswagen Bank can still be recognized as what is called eligible common equity tier one capital. The amendments refer to two provisions of the agreement and they are made for clarification purposes only. The other provisions of the agreement and its validity will not be affected. Both of these amendments were coordinated in detail with the European Central Bank. According to the amendments proposed, Volkswagen Bank may allocate amounts from the profit for the year to its retained earnings instead of transferring them to Volkswagen AG, provided, of course, that this is reasonable from a commercial perspective. Moreover, it is clarified that a termination of the profit and loss transfer agreement will not affect the situation that Volkswagen AG and Volkswagen Bank will be required to comply with their contractual obligations under the profit and loss transfer agreement until the termination takes effect. So Volkswagen Bank consequently will be required in principle to transfer its entire profit or loss until the termination takes effect to Volkswagen AG and Volkswagen AG will be required to compensate for any losses of Volkswagen Bank. Due to the profit and loss transfer agreement with Volkswagen Bank, a corporation and trade tax group can be established. On that basis, Volkswagen AG and Volkswagen Bank can be subject to combined taxation. This combined taxation is in the interest of Volkswagen AG, since positive and negative results of the two companies and of other companies in the group of companies can be offset simultaneously. So, as a result, the group tax cash flow and the group tax expense can be optimized. In order to maintain these advantages, also in the light of changed banking supervision requirements, we kindly request you today to approve the amendment of the Profit and Loss Transfer Agreement. The full wording of the Profit and Loss Transfer Agreement is set out under Regenda Item 6. For more information on the amendment of the Profit and Loss Transfer Agreement, please also refer to the joint report on the amendment of the Intercompany Agreement in this section titled Further Information on Our Agenda. And in addition to the joint report, the financial statements and management reports of Volkswagen Bank and Volkswagen AG, as well as the synopsis of the agreement as applicable before and following the amendment, are provided on our website. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now present my report on the legal and commercial background of the renewal of our authorized capital proposed under Agenda Item 10. The annual general meeting held in May 2019 created authorized capital, which means it authorized the management board of Volkswagen AG to increase the share capital of Volkswagen AG by issuing, with the consent of the supervisory board, new non-voting preferred shares against cash contributions on one or more occasions by up to a maximum of 179,200,000 euros. This authorization was granted for the maximum period as legally permissible of five years and will expire on the 13th of May 2024. The authorized capital is based on Section 4, Para 4 of our Articles of Association. The Management Board has not yet used this authorized capital. Since the ordinary annual general meeting in the year 2024 possibly will not be held before the 13th of May 2024, we propose that already today's annual general meeting renew the authorized capital.
By doing so, we can ensure that the management board will be authorized without any interruption to use authorized capital. Based on the authorized capital proposed today, the management board is to be authorized to increase the share capital of the company up to the 9th of May 2028 with the consent of the supervisory board by issuing new non-voting preferred bearer shares against cash contributions on one or more occasions up to a maximum of 227,543,994 euros and 88 cents. This means that the legally permissible maximum of the authorized capital is utilized in full. On the basis of the authorized capital, the management board can flexibly increase the share capital of the company without another time-consuming discussion on the annual general meeting being required. This will provide Volkswagen AG in a dynamic market environment with maximum flexibility concerning the quick and efficient implementation of necessary capital measures and therefore is in the interest of the company. The decision on the details of the rights attaching to the shares and the conditions applicable to the issuance of the shares will be taken by the management board, which will require the consent of the supervisory board for such a decision. As provided for concerning the existing authorization, the shareholders will also be granted preemptive rights for the new shares. The preemptive rights may not be excluded on the basis of this authorization as proposed. There are currently no specific plans for the utilization of the authorized capital. Hence, we kindly request you to approve that, as proposed in agenda item number 10, the existing authorized capital be cancelled, new authorized capital be created, and um, Section 4, Para 4 of the Articles of Association be amended accordingly. And for further details, you may also see the statements made under written item 10 on the invitation to this annual general meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to proceed to present my report on the amendment of the Articles of Association proposed under Agenda Item 8. By means of this amendment of the Articles of Association, an authorization of virtual annual general meetings being held is to be included in Section 19 of our Articles of Association with a time limit uh, stipulated for so, such authorization. The basis for this authorization was established by the amendment of the German Stock Corporation Act. Without such an authorization, um, it will no longer be possible in the future for Volkswagen to hold virtual annual general meetings. The management board and the supervisory board believe that the format of virtual annual general meetings has generally proved effective in the past two years. Contrary to the annual general meetings held to the um, COVID pandemic, the rights of the shareholders in the course of virtual annual general meetings in line with the new legal situation largely correspond to the rights of shareholders in the course of physical, in-person meetings like today. The shareholders in particular hold full rights also in the virtual annual general meetings in line with the new legal situation to submit motions, to speak, to ask questions. Now, for future annual general meetings, we want to be able to flexibly decide in the interest of the company and its shareholders whether to hold a physical or an in-person annual general meeting. An argument supporting annual general meetings being held virtually is that it allows the broadest possible participation of shareholders. And further good reasons supporting virtual annual general meetings are sustainability and cost aspects. There may, have, of course, also be reasons supporting the annual general meeting being held in physical form too. Now, as you can see, considering the format of today's AGM, we will carefully consider each year if it is possible for us to hold a virtual annual, annual general meeting or not, or whether we will proceed with an in-person meeting. In any case, we will always comprehensively take into account the rights of the shareholders when taking such a decision. According to the legal provisions, the authorizations the authorization to hold a virtual annual general meeting is limited to a period of five years. And after the expiry of such period, the management board and the supervisory board will consider, uh, based also on the experience gained um, on virtual annual general meetings, whether re renewal of this authorization will be proposed to the AGM. Ladies and 
Gentlemen, you will have seen from the convening notice that we intended to resolve under Agenda Item 7 on the approval of the draft hive down and transfer agreement between Volkswagen AG and Volkswagen Financial Services Europe AG. The proposed hive down was going to be implemented in the context of the complex restructuring of the Financial Services Division. The intention is to create a new financial holding group and to separate the European financial services activities from the non-European financial services activities. The objective is also to enable separate consolidation of only the European financial services activities. The tax authorities recently informed us that the route we are pursuing to achieve the restructuring, so via a hive down of Volkswagen Bank GmbH, cannot be implemented without significant tax disadvantages. And as we already announced on our website yesterday, we have therefore decided to refrain from implementing the hive down and to remove item 7 from the agenda. Agenda item 7 will therefore not be discussed at today's meeting. We will implement the restructuring of the Financial Services Division by means other than a hive down. Ladies and gentlemen, and I have finished my oral report to the annual general meeting. I would like to thank you for your attention and give the floor back to Mr. Poch. I would like to continue, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much, Dr. Randlitz. I would like to refer you to Agenda Item 9 to amend the Articles of Association governing the participation of supervisory board members in an AGM. The law allows us to include a provision in the Articles of Association to ensure supervisory board members can attend an AGM by video an audio link rather than being present in person. We believe that the in-person presence of members of the board of management and the supervisory board to be very important because that would allow us also to talk to you and exchange views with you, ladies and gentlemen, and therefore we are not making use of this option to uh, connect uh, members of the supervisory board by video and audio link for in-person meetings. In the case of a virtual annual general meeting, this exchange with shareholders is conducted on virtual platforms. So the presence, the physical presence of supervisory board members at the location from which the AGM is streamed would cause cost and additional input, which does not uh, mean added benefit. So what that means is that for virtual AGMs, the Articles of Association will make uh, a stipulation on the audio and video link of supervisory board members. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point I would like to say goodbye to our uh, viewers that have been uh, following the streaming of the annual general meeting over the internet. Registered shareholders had the opportunity to submit their text proposals uh, before the meeting. Powers of attorney and instruction votes can still be submitted up to 1 o'clock p M. For electronic voting also, these options are still also available until 1 p.m. I would also like to point out that the results of the vote will be uh, available on the internet at the end, after the end of our AGM. 